हेलो 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 अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी आई एन ऊ पखेर अगले नी हाउ चु ने शुम में वश मले ओ हाय गुनजाइमस गुटन मॉर्गन प्रीवियस हाय हग्स एंड हेलोस एंड वेरी अमेजिंग खुशामदीद टू एवरीबॉडी हु स्टिल नीड टू पीटी वन एंड वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग अलोंग साइड शहजाद खान एंड महा मखदूम द डे टुडे लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इज थर्सडे वी आर जस्ट अराउंड द कॉर्नर फॉर ईद उल अजा एज़ वेल And hello, Maha. How are you? Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, hello, Shazad. Assalamu alaikum. Um, this was a problem when Shazad says hello because you know I start remembering everything I want to say, and then Shazad just goes on and on, oh, and, on, on, on and, on. and until the break of dawn. <laughs> um, anyway, so Shazad, how are you? Oh, I am not very well, but I'm doing great now. You are, yeah. Well. You yeah. Are haven't been very well. Yeah. So for all those people who are out there, I might not be looking very good these days, but it's perfectly <laughs> all right. I'm very good within my own self. That's so my soul excellent. is a greater uh, or and a brighter soul. That's what it is. But okay. ladies and gentlemen, I think you've got two surprises to share. Okay. First of all, tomorrow we are doing something which is going to be very interesting. Yes, and I think it's going so to be a mission fun. for me too. Yeah. Right? Do you want to tell them what we're going to do tomorrow? Yeah. Well, basically tomorrow, me and Shahzad are splitting up. Uh, Shahzad will be going. going out into the world into the br bakra mandi bright eyed and bushy tailed into the bakra mandi to show you guys what it's all about and the mission ladies and gentlemen i'll have at hand is that you know uh, people have given me a budget of almost 50000 rupees this is what we have decided and i have to purchase two goats and i will have to let you guys know how to purchase two goats within 50000 rupees and i think 25000 rupees for a normal goat i think is is the normal price to pay right okay well i mean during this time yes yeah and before that what ma will do is that ma we have invited a chef and, and a veterinarian and we have uh, invited a veterinary doctor mm -hmm. and they are going to talk about that so that's i think mm -hmm. ma's forte yeah. my forte is to go into the mandi and talk to <laughs> all of those people i don't know what they have to say because usually what happens is when you go to mandi there are yeah. so many people complaining about the administration mm -hmm. or we do not have water So for all those people who are going to be in the Monday please don't do this to and me. And we'll figure out if Shahzad has taken home the lessons that we've been trying to give to you as well. Does he wear a mask? Is he wearing gloves? Or is he going to come back on Tuesday sicker? <laughs> so let's we'll find out yeah, uh, next and, week. And what are we doing on Saturday? On Saturday we do have a special Eid transmission for you. It's our usual 2 hour special yeah. Eid transmission and we have some wonderful guests. We'll be playing some fun games to get get you guys into in the mood and for all those you know who are unable to be with their friends we will be with you to entertain you and take you through the afternoon the way we do it i think that's how it exactly. is but right now ladies and gentlemen time now for top stories let's take a look at what's happening in the world yeah Millions of Muslims from across the world are gathering at Arafat for Waqf e Arafat which is the Rukn e Azam of Hajj. The National Assembly has passed a unanimous resolution rejecting hostile and threatening statements against Pakistan made by the US president and top US commander in Afghanistan. Pakistan signs memorandum of understanding with Japan International Corporation Agency on Energy Conservation. The sale of sacrificial animals has picked up as Eid al Adha approaches with buyers thronging cattle markets. Interesting use of words there. Tens of thousands of party goers in Spain threw 160 tons of overripe tomatoes at each other in an epic food fight known as La Tomatina. I think I've seen a film where there was this festival shown. Yeah, this is Very different. Yeah, sorry, I can't remember. And finally, uh, the world remembers Princess of Wales Lady Diana on her 20th death anniversary. Wow, it's been 20 years already. I remember the day it happened. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot happening. Exactly, okay. that's what it is. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's about time we move on to words our public service message. Yes, and today she's out to be doing it. So let's take a look at what he's got to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we have got two public service messages today. One is from our producer back in the MCR master control room, 
and one is from ourselves, uh, which is me and Maha, obviously. So the first one is by us, and that is that you know whenever you go to buy these sacrificial animals, what happens is when you come back home, you end up buying quite a lot of food for them. Yeah. Please make sure that you do not waste money and do not waste all of that food because eventually when it's just two days left and there's a habit of kids that you know every now and then they're going to go run to their fathers mm -hmm. or give us the money you know we need to buy the food and whatnot please don't do that do not waste money and do not waste that food too as well because it ends up lying on the streets and nobody's there to clean it exactly. up exactly and now the second one do you want to do it no you absolutely okay, can okay so the second one is what happens once uh, for once we are done with the sacrifice what happens that for all of that material which we are now going to use for cooking and it is not useful as well and people do not cook it. For example, I think it's the stomach of the goat as well. I do not need to go into further details. No, you don't. And uh, what happens is that people end up throwing them on the streets. Please don't do that because there are many airborne diseases because of these things. So please make sure that you put it in a bag, wait for the car which is going to come mm. by the administration and just give it to them and they'll take it away. And also, you know, in, within our religion, we do promote hygiene and cleanliness. So that is part of it. And, you know, how it, really you shouldn't be throwing it out. It's not so good. So find this iman. Exactly. I so think that's now let's move on to the show because we have a lot to cover. Yeah, let's We've got some it. wonderful guests in the studio. As you know, we... It's not just highlighting Pakistan's talent like we were doing yesterday. We had Lumi in the in the studio. In the house. Uh, yeah, in the house. Um, but we like to also, you know, like to educate ourselves on the history, on the culture, and the heritage that we've um, inherited. And, ta <laughs> and talking about that, I think uh, Maha, for quite a lot of people over here in Pakistan do not even know about the architecture of Pakistan. And uh, just because of that, ladies and gentlemen, in Comsets Art Gallery, what they did was that mm. you know they were faculty members they were members from the heritage group of pakistan what mm. they did was that they took pictures from up north till i think indus river i this is the the stretch mm. where they went and they took pictures and then they did an exhibition which is about the evolution of architecture within the 70 years and since we are 70 years old mm. so i think that was a great initiative exactly and i think as far as from my from the booklet that, that i was reading yesterday is that you know it is the evolution of the heritage it yeah. is what we've got what the talent has and the thing is they've taken uh, photographers from hong kong turkey in a Balochistan, islamabad and lahore and they're all being exhibited at comsat's art gallery and it's a great initiative and so i think i think the best part over here mm. is that you know when somebody's going to fly in from hong kong or turkey not knowing what the architecture of pakistan looks like or the heritage is I think it is going to be very interesting for people to see and witness it at the art gallery. Yeah, no, but the art, I th well, let's get that clarified because from what I read was that the photographers were also from there as well. But we have the uh, curate, well, some of the assistant curators. Yes. I don't know how to call that, but uh, Shazad will start the introduction. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, on my right hand side, we have got somebody who's an architect, faculty at Comstats Islamabad, Department of Architecture, member of the Heritage Group of Pakistan, none other than. Miss Nawal Nadeem. Hello, Nawal. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, it's over. okay. I can, it. it's, it's okay. You seem a bit worried. <laughs> okay, besides Nawal, we've been joined by Vajiha Anwar. She is an assistant program officer and she is working at the Comsats Art Gallery as well. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for joining us. And last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, somebody whom I thought was a student at the university, but he's not. He's a faculty member too. He's an architect. He's a member of the Heritage Group of Pakistan. He's none other than Mr. Hamza Zafar. Hello, Hamza. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Thank you. Okay, so we got, I've got a feeling that Naval and Hamza are going to be the serious ones, so we need to lighten them up. So let's start with you, Naval. Um, what did you guys do to decide, uh, celebrate the 70 years? What is this exhibition all about? Um, this was sort of our first venture as the Heritage Group of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, do you need a glass of water? Yes, please. All right, okay. glass you. of water, please. <laughs> For somebody um, who's watching me on television, please okay. bring it on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what we did was um, we brought together a number of photographers, um, we asked them to send in their entries mm -hmm. of how they perceive heritage, architectural heritage in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And we got a number of very interesting um, entries. Okay. okay. So let me start it out first. Yeah, wait, wait, let's, off. yeah, mm -hmm. she's going to take a deep breath. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get her some water, so we'll ask those questions <laughs> in a moment. So yeah. yeah. Let's Bajiha, move on to you, ma'am. Wait, yeah. so Vajiha, tell us, how did Comsats get involved with the national heritage of Pakistan to Actually, uh, Nawal yeah. and Hamza, they are both uh, faculty members of Comsats as yeah. well, and they are members of Heritage Group. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they brought up uh, this idea that we should be celebrating uh, the 70th independence year of Pakistan mm -hmm. with something innovative and something that represents our culture from past till, um, uh, to till date. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why they um, uh, captured the different uh, areas of Pakistan, mm -hmm. different historical places of Pakistan and uh, exhibited their photographs mm -hmm. and we collaborated with them, Kamsat's Art Gallery. We facilitated them in uh, bringing up this exhibition and executing this idea. Wonderful. Okay, let me move on to Hamza. Hamza, why do you think there was a need for such an idea? I mean, obviously it is out of the box, but why? Do you think people of Pakistan are ready to witness such an evolution? Uh, as we see that there, um, in Lahore recently for the past one year, there's been a debate on uh, heritage and then conservation of heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been this green line metro you, you all know about. And yes, there's exactly. There's debates going on about like um, uh, diminishing the heritage of Lahore and basically Pakistan. Mm. So this was basically in order to stand and uh, tell people of Pakistan and the cities of Pakistan that their heritage mm. belongs to them and they should take stand and like they should stop uh, their demolition and mm. whatever that's going on to those heritage because in the world where we see that there's a tourism going on mm. heritage is the main thing how they capture tourism absolutely and for the past five years i assume uh, the tourism of pakistan has increased in the northern areas just yes. because of the heritage of those areas yeah so okay. i believe that notion was very much needed in these times and 70 years of uh, uh, independence would actually would have helped to so so do you think that the crux or the core of this exhibition is to promote tourism I'm not really, but it's one facet of it. Oh. Okay. Um, what okay. are the other facets? Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, can I just add yeah, one sure. question? So, the facets mm -hmm. of it, from what I've picked up so far, mm -hmm. is to try and educate people on the importance, importance of their of architectural heritage. Yes, and its preservation, conservation, and not okay. only just heritage, but our <coughs> sorry, modern architecture and where we're going okay. on from there. Um, so, as you all know, everybody knows. Um, sorry, I have a question. Okay. Okay. It um, has evolved mm -hmm. over time. Okay. What we uh, brought with us uh, at the time of independence mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. we took it from there and how did it evolve and mm -hmm. now we have formed a different identity mm -hmm. and we need to show this to the world mm -hmm. in order to uh, show the better side of Pakistan. We have been witnessing the better side of Pakistan for mm -hmm. so long now that we need to recreate the soft image of Pakistan that what we actually are. This is the true face of Pakistan, which needs to be shown to the world. Mm -hmm. And I think so, uh, there's no better way uh, of uh, showing it to the world uh, other than um, showing it to artists. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much for saying that. But ladies and gentlemen, at this point of time, we need to go for a short break. But when you guys are going to come back, there's one question which I need to ask, and that is, if we need to promote the soft image of Pakistan, if we need to show the world that this is who we are, why are these exhibitions happening within Pakistan? Let's take a break. Good morning. is life. Book is hope. And book is light for the future.
just like the billboard paintings performed in Pakistan, there is another indigenous form of art performed in Pakistan, and it is the truck. With its old colorful floral pattern, depiction of human heroes with creative aspects, ratios, calligraphy, and poetic verse, and driver's words of wisdom. This form of art is truly a part of Pakistani transport tradition. Many trucks and buses in Pakistan are highly customized and decorated by their owners. These adjourned vehicles are considered as moving art or jingle art. Because of their unique decor style, these vehicles are quite distinct in layers from other trucks around the world. Each part of the vehicle is decorated differently, with variations depending on the regional style. In Pakistan, a truck driver, owner, usually pays $3,000 to $5,000 for their vehicle's external decoration. The art embellishes such trucks according to the particular tastes of the driver. Nearly every city in Pakistan has a unique decor. The Balochistani and Peshawari trucks are heavily trimmed with wood. Rawalpindi and Islamabad trucks have permanently featured plastic work. Camel-borne ornamentation is commonly seen in trucks decorated by Sindh artists. These trucks are also representative of different local historical and cultural regions of Pakistan. Thus, these trucks are also representative of different historical and cultural regions of Pakistan. The enchanting art and craft of Pakistan. The largest cultural activity in Pakistan is the annual National Folk Festival, Lok Mela, held in Islamabad in October each year. Over the past two decades, this festival has taken on an international flavor and more than 20 different countries have sent their artisans and performers to participate in the festival. Nationally, the festival has become a thing of pride for artisans and performers. Welcome back everyone. Before the break we have, were in discussion about the importance of cultural heritage and the preservation of the architectural uh, aspect of it all. So Shazad had a very interesting question. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, since we're in conversation with Nawal, Bajia and Hamza over here, so my question was, and earlier when Maha asked Hamza a question, so Hamza said that, you know, we need to promote the soft image of mm. Pakistan and this is what usually people come up with as well. It's perfectly all right. So we come up and with now, all the time. And now, if we are to promote the soft image of Pakistan, how, how do you think that we can do it by doing all of these exhibitions within Pakistan? Because the soft image of Pakistan for us is, I think, is very soft already. But for all those people who we need to reach out to, in, to probably target the tourism industry or whatever industry we want to target, how is it possible by doing it within Pakistan? Don't you think that you guys need to travel abroad? I think uh, there's a saying known as a picture represents um, a thousand words. Mm. So basically those pictures are the words within themselves. So we don't have to actually reach out <coughs> and go out to other countries to actually tell them that there is so much essence in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. These pictures are being spread all over the social media mm -hmm. and all the photographs that are taken by all the photographers are already being sent all around the world. And that image is actually being then shown to the other countries, like, for instance, when the photographers from Hong Kong and right. Turkey came in here. 
So that's the so initial this is step, the basically. Power of photography in. Yeah. Yeah. and social media. Okay, yeah. and also another thing is just uh, the photographers were Pakistani, right? And yeah, so they had them. taken the pictures in the past. Yeah. Okay, so now tell us. Okay, so let's. Um, you know, the thing is, you know, I was just thinking about what you just your question as well is that how do we, you know, we have to promote the soft image for people externally, but the only way you can do that is when you're having the positive activities within your country that yeah. will then you know have a rippling effect so now you guys picked as i mentioned in the introduction you picked artists from uh, interior blochistan uh, from hong kong you know you got all these artists how did you first of all reach out to everyone and how did you then make your selection of wh which artists to go uh, photographers to go for yeah, have to call for artists um, photographers basically. Where? Um, How? On Facebook, through email, all the photographers I knew. Okay. Um, so we reached out to them and they spread the word. Okay. And we were able to sort of do it in a very short time. We had around two weeks only. Okay. So. Wow, was, that's yeah. a very short time. Yeah. I was glad by um, the response we got okay. by the photographers. They were really excited. Okay. They had a lot of good work. Okay. And I would like to add some um, a point here that. The Heritage Group of Pakistan is working not only to promote a better image of Pakistan abroad, mm -hmm. but also within Pakistan, mm -hmm. where we do not understand the importance of architectural design, mm -hmm. of where we've come from. Mm -hmm. um, we've inherited Pakistan, right? It mm -hmm. came to us. And it came with a lot of um, treasure, so mm -hmm. to say. We've got um, Gandhara civilization architecture. We've got Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. We've got Mughal architecture. We've got British colonial right. and from from there we've come on to modern architecture we see this, the city of Islamabad mm -hmm. designed by a Greek architect town planner and so we've got like this archive which is so rich and, and then we've got Raul Pindi which is not planned at all <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was planned but you know, like little on, yes. yeah. yeah okay so we've got a lot of it and Raul Pindi in itself is very interesting my my thesis was on that city so yeah. I find that very interesting Oh, so you share something from that thesis then. Um, it was a study in colonial Rawalpindi and okay. Mali. Yeah. And I was studying uh, the idea of how the British were sort of trying to get their hold in India. Mm. And P Rawalpindi, um, you know Rawalpindi camp, the cantonment. Yeah, yeah. This was one of the largest military camps of all of the Indian subcontinent. Wow. So it was a major sort of station for all the soldiers. And we had Mari, which was... Um, sort of like a sanatorium mm -hmm. when you know the soldiers would fall ill they need some time to relax they would be sent to Murray so I had this idea where that's a great thing yeah. to do I think. yeah so I mean the weather was really good for them of course I mean from the scorching heat of the plains that they could go up okay up right? and I worked on the idea how we see Pindi and Islamabad mm -hmm. as the twin cities now but back then um, Pindi and Murray were sort of like the twin Okay, city, interesting. Yeah. See, it's learning something new every day. Okay, so now moving on uh, to you, Vajiha. How did, uh, you know, the art gallery get, you know, how did you guys play your role in sel helping select the artists? Did you play a role in that? Or um, the areas that you guys were locating the, the ph photographs from? Yeah, we were um, in discussion with Heritage Group. Uh, basically, it was their idea. And mm. we just told them how to execute it, what w which were the best ways to execute it. Mm. And uh, we were there to facilitate them in mm. order to tell them how to execute their idea. Mm. And uh, I would like to add something to Shazad's sure, question. Sure. Yeah. You said that we need to uh, uh, go promote. abroad and mm. promote our arts abroad. Um, actually, we are uh, doing it. Wow. Mm, uh, our show is going to, our travel show is going to China in, uh, at the end of September. It is already planned Send through Concepts Art, art Gallery. <laughs> yeah, right. just over there just the like miniature that, artists and the renowned calligraphers of Pakistan, they are going to go there. Renowned then we have of Pakistan. You know. You're a piece of work. I don't know yeah. about art, but a piece of work for sure. <laughs> and then we have uh, um, um, a show in Belgium, which is wow. in Pipeline. We are Excellent. under this. But uh, the point is, so w uh, uh, there's a little loophole which I would uh, like to just point out. Uh, not that I would uh, be um, uh, pinpointing pointing at something bad, but it's just that media doesn't give a lot of, lot of attention to these to sort of us. Yeah. You know, uh, when we were calling media to uh, cover this event, mm. they were like, oh, no political personality is coming, no media person is there. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, sort of not possible to cover it. Oh. So 
things are happening in Pakistan. It's just that we are not able to promote it at the right Absolutely. platform. Absolutely. And I, you know, I agree with that because, you know, well, I told you, this is why I'm sitting in Pakistan, because the Pakistani media did fail to promote the accurate representation of Pakistan. This is why most of the world thinks it's a war-torn country when it absolutely isn't. This is why we do this show, to show you the reality. Thank and you, you so much for inviting right. us and here. Then, and and yeah. That's perfectly absolutely right. And then there's right. one more thing which I need to say, and that is, see, art is for eyes. Art mm. is not for camera. Yeah. So what happens over here in Pakistan is, ladies and gentlemen, that even if we are going to share a picture, or probably an exhibition yeah. over the television. Now, for all of those pictures, those pictures cannot speak a thousand words to the camera they're being captured by. Yeah. It needs a thousand eyes to be there yeah. so that they can understand yeah. all of those words. So yeah. we have to make it a way, make it look like as if it's interesting, entertaining, okay. so that people want to capture it. No, no, but that's the thing. But then who, def no, but the definition of entertaining and Im information is, you know, it's so, it's so broad. Like just, look, until you expose people to it, they're not going to have the education or the awareness exactly. to understand it. Now, of you have a picture, you have an exhibition in Pakistan, right? And it's got all the artists from Imperial, Balochistan, Lahore, Islamabad. That shows you a united Pakistan. It shows you the history. It shows you the culture. It shows you the peace side, peaceful exactly. side. But what's being portrayed in the media? Yeah, because, the um, sorry to cut you, no, please but uh, we, we did an event with the ministry last week. Uh, Concert Saad Gelli was collaborating with Ministry of Heritage and we did an international calligraphy exhibition and there was this Amazing. guy from Shumali Waziristan who okay. showed his uh, calligraphy and Mr. Ifan Siddiqui, he was like, oh, thanks God, we are hearing something really good about Shumali Waziristan other than bombings. Yeah. So, see, I would so that's what told me. surprises us as well. Mm. So we need to create this awareness that those so people are also... So what you need to do is that you've got a remote control every morning when you wake up, just tune into PTV. Well, that's it. <laughs> sure. You know, we are that's going to show enough. you the brighter side of Pakistan. Yeah, sure. that's great, but that's not enough. So now, that's, you know, I'm glad you highlighted the importance of... Uh, Protecting it over media. Exactly. So now, um, within the university, though, um, how have you... Okay, let's ask Hamza, because he's yeah. been quiet for a while. Yeah. Um, regarding... You wanted to show people within Pakistan, you know, with the whole green belt being uh, built into, etc. There is this debate about uh, pr preservation yeah. and conservation. How are you expecting to teach the students that through the uh, through the photo photographs and through this exhibition? And have you had any feedback so far? Uh, there, uh, my colleague, uh, we graduated together. Okay. He went abroad to Germany for his masters in uh, conservation and heritage. Uh, so basically, mm -hmm. his idea was th similar to this, that we should learn because we don't have masters mm -hmm. in uh, conservation, heritage, and uh, management, all of mm -hmm. that. So he went there and uh, came back. He's now back. He came back yesterday. Mm -hmm. So his basic main idea was to come back and then join an academia to promote and to tell the students how important it is for them to learn to preserve their heritage, basically, mm -hmm. not just contemporary architecture and all of that that is going on and that's been taught throughout the years but also this side of uh, architecture which is a little backlashed mm -hmm. I, I would say and hidden okay. so this needs to be come out come out of the box and the being explored by all the students eventually at the do end do you think preserving yeah. so is a hard job um, it's, it's a challenge yeah definitely. it is yeah because you know when yeah. when i look at your faces you know <laughs> without a smile early in the morning <laughs> i'm like what have these people been doing so please make sure, wake up guys, come on, let's, yeah. let's have some energy. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm just saying that um, for the sake of <laughs> progress, um, our her heritage should not be sacrificed because yes. we have instances where our monuments mm. were sort of just torn down and stripped off mm. just because we wanted a road to go through there. I mean, yes, because it was 14th of August. Okay, earlier. but, no, but now the thing is, now regarding these, uh, the demolitions or, mm -hmm. you know, the the destruction of these uh, heritage sites. And we're responsible for that ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I know in my 50 years, people are going to, we're going to look back and be like, what did we do? And we, yeah. I mean, if you're not going to replace it, especially with something that's better or at least similar in standard to what it was, then but what's, you don't what need are you to doing? Take, get rid of the old thing. I, to I'm never, I'm not going to say that, you know, we ever need to take it down. You can always work with what you have. You can. Look at Hansa, for example. Mm -hmm. You have Baltit Fort, Altit Fort. Mm -hmm. They're all being preserved. Yep. Everyone goes there to visit. It's absolutely beautiful. You feel pride. You're like, wow, mm -hmm. in our country, we have so much history. And I think preservation is better than changing 
or probably bringing in another monument. Okay. I think preservation needs to be here so that when our kids are going to grow up, at least they're going to go see something I'm that you know which we can recall to as well. Exactly. That's okay, we were here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let me show you something I just recently experienced. I came back two days ago from a road trip on two wheels okay. on the entire Gil Gilgit Baltistan area. Okay, yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, you won't believe me that there are certain things that we, I didn't know personally, that we have so many world records in mm -hmm. Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We have the highest uh, desert, we have the highest lake in the world, we have the highest uh, mountain Kasha ranges. Brahm one, Kasha Brahm two. Exactly, mm -hmm. we have the Hindu Kush, the Karakaram and the Himalayas joining yeah. together at one point and the, mm -hmm. that's the highest point. And uh, there's so many other things that I personally didn't know and I went there and I got to know about those things. Mm -hmm. So similarly, once we portray all of those things, like you said, the Altid Fort and the Baltid Fort, unless and until we portray them and we picture them in for form photographs, nobody is going to go because no, like we have nobody 20, would know what exactly, yeah. Yeah. like nobody is able to go to the northern areas. You know, I should start, and yeah. this is another point that uh, you were mentioning, you know, like how are people going to understand, but it's a picture, so it's better, you know, like it's, Rather than explaining and telling them to read about mm -hmm. it, you're, you're literally showing them that, look, yeah. this is what you have. Exactly. I would like to invite all of you uh, to the exhibition. It's continuing. Are we going to get free meals? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you will. Uh, it's going to continue till the 7th of September. Excellent. And uh, it's open for all. Okay. And uh, once you're going to visit and once you're going to sh uh, see those photographs, you would be like, yeah, I have to visit this place and this place and this place and your list will get longer and longer and longer okay. and you'd want to visit each and every part of Pakistan and that's I think <coughs> what we should do. Absolutely. I think what we are going to do is that we're going to request our producer if you go, if you got your hands on those pictures mm. or probably the catalog. I think even if it's black and white, we, we now, can I tend think to share it because you know the amount of yeah. conversation we have had and the amount of hype we have created, we need to see those pictures. Yeah. So if you guys can do that, please share those pictures with all of our viewers out there. But other than that, there's one more important point and aspect which I need to share and that is half of the time whenever, you know, all of those pictures are going to be shared on the social media and whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. What happens is that, you know, people forget to write the names of below the as well of, of that yeah. particular True. place. So, True. you know, eventually you just... Yes. You're like, okay, you know, who do I ask? And then you feel a bit ashamed as well that you do not know yeah, the places yeah, in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think yeah. this is one great that's responsibility. That's why we have the catalog um, where okay. we have bio about the photographer and what they do, where they've been. Mm -hmm. And one thing about the photographs, they're not just sort of um, records of a building. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, through the lens of the camera, the photographers have captured their own perspective. Okay. You know, there, there are studies on light and shadow and color and perspective which were True. so interesting that have you guys co covered Kaide Azam's house in Karachi? Um, we, ha we had um, Mohata yeah. Palace um, right. we had um, yeah. I think Thank ladies you. and gentlemen please uh, I mean it's Eid already mm -hmm. so you know make make your plans and anybody can come to Kaus Kaus Art yeah, Gallery yeah, which is wonderful and it's open for, for all, all. Yeah. excellent and um, opening and times food. Um, 9 to 5. 9 to 5, guys. So you guys have some days off to make sure you drop into the art gallery. And it's on till the 7th of September. But right now, we're going to go for a short break. Yeah. And then when you come back, <laughs> I feel like Shazal wants to say now. Just say Yeah, it. the only thing which I wanted to say over here is that, you know, when you go to Comsats, obviously there are people around on the gates as well for the security. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to be a bit of inconvenience over there or people will have Not to call you Not a lot. They, they, if they are going to tell that they are here to uh, go to the exhibition, they are going to come yeah. inside. Just be wow. clear when you go to the gate that they are here for the exhibition. There's no need to have any sort of carry ego. Any weapons with so you with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going for a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning.
welcome, sorry, <laughs> welcome back everyone. And I completely forgot our deal. So now Shazad has some questions to ask because our... Yeah, meanwhile, you know, when we went for a break, I was just trying to pump up our professors as well, but you know, doesn't Wait, really look like... We're just struggling to find the right doesn't images. Doesn't really look like, because you know, Hamza Ali, Hamza Ali on two wheels went to uh, Gilgit Baltistan. Yeah. That's what it is. Please okay. do not go to Gilgit Baltistan on two wheels. It's what? very dangerous. And were you wearing a it's helmet? It's quite safe, yeah. It was okay, complete that's great. Is. Okay, make okay. sure that you're safe. Of now, course. what I need to ask is, since you guys are all about the heritage of Pakistan mm -hmm. as well, so what I want to ask is, how do you see the evolution of architecture in Pakistan from a British colony, which we still have a symbol of, you yeah. know, it, we do symbolize the Remnant. being part of them as mm -hmm. well at times, but now things have changed. You know, mm -hmm. people have moved into bigger houses, bigger buildings. I think that, you know, a bit of Roman touch is being given within the architecture that as is, well. So where, really who are we inclined to now and what, how was it earlier? Um, the, the entire sort of um, intention behind this project is to sort of engage architects in a conversation where we see where we are now at this moment and where we need to be in 10 years or 20 years. Mm. Um, because uh, like I said before, after partition, we had Islamabad, which was a modern city. Mm -hmm. um, so we have these foreign principles imported again for us. Mm -hmm. And as we've been working with architects, yeah. we've seen that we still have this sort of idea that we need to import. Okay. Like we had Spanish Mediterranean villas and God knows what. Mm -hmm. I mean, fine, they can work with us, but we need to sort of adapt them to our environment and our culture. Okay. So we are sort of trying to like piece ourselves together and form an identity yeah. and it will take a while to form okay, that. So we still haven't, we're still a part in yeah. that yeah. evolution. Yes, we're and sort of. Still evolving. Yes, yeah, still and evolving. I think the funny yeah. part is that whenever you're constructing something or whenever you're making something, so you're going to get the tiles from Italy, furniture from Spain, I yeah. don't know. So do we have our own identity? With globalization, that's going to happen. Okay. But yeah. it's about, see, I mean, if, if I'm going to make a make, painting, I'm going to have the same paint as you. So but that's not what the question is. The yeah. question is, mm -hmm. do we have our own identity of Look, architecture? Identity, basically, mm -hmm. uh, 70 years is a really short time for an identity to, mm. like, yeah. yeah, basically take shape to make face. Mm. So we are in, still in a flux and constant flux because there are cities that have been 1,000 years old and they've made identities. Yeah. Mm. So 70 years is a very, very negligible time. So mm. we are still in a process of uh, acquiring mm. things from neighbors, from within ourselves. Mm. And these days, if you see, we have everything that is instant. So we need instant glorification. We need instant fanciness. We need instant you good need styles. instant gratification too. And we yeah. need instant... Uh, yeah, you can obviously thank us later. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Case in point right here. Okay, now uh, we have to wrap up because we are running out of time. And this is a really important question Shazad's asked. So we are in that evolution of We're in it. the process and we're only just trying to yeah. process. channelize it okay. in the right direction. Yeah. Or Wonderful. Like and gather people on one platform. Yes, to work together to, mm. towards a cohesive mm. outlook of what Pakistan is and should be. Okay, yeah. so now uh, the final question I think would be, the, uh, just the final question would be that going forward, which, because you said we're still in that, we're still in trying to figure it out mm -hmm. in 70 years, there's a lot, especially with, you know, 2000 BC, you know, culture yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. remnant still, still here, yeah. so yes, yeah. yeah, the civilizations. So, w are we going on the right direction though? Are we keeping, making sure that we're not taking too much, we're not being too globalized? Look, I are think we there still are some efforts respecting which are going in no. the right direction. Uh, yeah. We cannot say either it's a good, the, the right mm. direction or the wrong yeah. because once you are deciding your path, you, I, you shift from one path to another. Mm. So either one way is the wrong way or the other way is the right way. Mm. We cannot decide it's that. Once we reach it to the destination, then we will understand what the path that we have been left out was it the right path or not? Okay, but no, but surely by using hindsight as well, yeah. because, okay, yeah, this country's 70 years old, but yeah. the world isn't 70 years old. Yeah. We know which area we're yeah. from. Yeah. But as um, as a nation, as, you know, educators in this field, especially you guys, uh, you two, um, are we making sure that we're keeping what little identity we have? So we're Pakistani, like we're in the mm -hmm. subcontinent, yeah. we're Muslim, you know, we have had, uh, you know, a violent past where, you know, we were persecuted, all these things. Are we making sure that we're remembering all of this yeah. or are we just ditching it all for the Western no. world? In, in celebrating we'll all of that, yeah. we will find our identity. We will move forward. Okay, forward. wonderful. Because yeah. that is what I think we have already adopted a lot of good things. Okay. Uh, the Muslim architecture, it's famous all over the world. Yeah. And I if we stick to it only, mm. I think we would be able to form a very um, um, 
different sort of identity which has a lot of colors mm. and uh, cultural preservatives mm. and um, a lot of richness mm. and people already like what we have we have seen it's foreigners true. coming to pakistan and they love each and every corner of pakistan and they write a lot of good things about pakistan which are of course well, then one again, last thing before, before we wrap yes. it up why do you think there is a need to be moving in one direction why can't we no, just we are exploring be different directions we and we why would create we one identity through that one at a time guys I one at a time yeah, <laughs> hey, guys why is there a need to move in Would one direction that's Vian, that's i think you are uh, very pro globalization mm. so that's one factor that globalization is promoting but once we are talking about heritage then we have to like take a barrier we have to make a barrier for that because it's globalization right. actually kills the entire aspect of yes. heritage Act and exactly. conservation and all of that so, so that's why you people are from the heritage group of yeah, pakistan yeah saying. so we are yeah. like the stepping stone or we have just like the barrier for you guys people like you to just stop yeah, the yeah. you are yeah. going to go beyond one certain we'll point now so i've got people who go to stop me now yeah, yeah. <laughs> finally but thank you so much for your time thank it's thank you for your time pleasure. thank you for having thanks us thanks for having us and you. best thank of luck with the exhibition for the rest of the days and we will give all the information on our website as well so it is open till the 7th um 9 to 5 don't take anything that's going to get you trouble with the security just say that you're here to see the architectural exhibition at the gallery exactly. thank you again and for tomorrow ladies and gentlemen do not forget to tune in because it's going to be a very interesting show on saturday on the first day of eid we are doing a special transformation of world this morning which is going to be at 11 a.m. in the morning we are not going to come live at 9 and yeah just have fun and eat less that's it exactly and with that um have a great day and log on to our facebook fan page this is with the name of world this morning our twitter page world this morning without a g our daily mission youtube page world this morning world this morning and the repeat is at 5 past 11 p.m. have a wonderful day we'll see you bright and early tomorrow the next time 1 to 3 good, good morning, morning.